Hi, and welcome back to the second part of the tutorials about SPSS and social network analyses. Um, I'll assume that you also uh, saw the first part, so I will not introduce myself here. Uh, let me just uh, note one thing though, if you're interested in, in other video tutorials, you can have a look at this web address, which is my web page. Um, and uh, there are several other uh, uh, video tutorials about the usage of SPSS there also. So you, uh, that might uh, those might help you out uh, some point. Okay, um, we looked at uh, ties as cases data sets, and uh, I already said that uh, that's sometimes important if you want to do social network analysis to create such a data set. So we're going to figure out how to do that, and. Um, while explaining that, I'll also explain a couple of other things along the way. So let's go to SPSS, and this is a syntax file I prepared for these tutorials. Um, let's open the data we'll use. I introduced them in the first part, and I usually also set a working directory uh, in the first line, which is quite convenient. Okay, so let's open the data. And by the way, I'll also upload the syntax file so you can uh, perform every step um, at your own computer and uh, see what it does. Okay, so we opened uh, the data. Oh, uh, it's on the wrong position on the screen. It should be like this. Um, it looks like this, uh, the data after you downloaded, downloaded them. Um, and we're going to change, before we start, we're going to change something. And it has to do with the uh, uh, identification variable. So uh, what I want to have is uh, one unique number for every single case. And that was what I showed you in the first part. But unfortunately, now we have uh, only this information, which is um, a combination of, well, it says school number, but it's actually the school number and class. So this is school one, class A and a name number which is a, a number within the within the class so i want to um, uh, create a variable that has that, that that's a unique number for um for every individual but in a way that uh, allows me to track the the friends and the other ties also that are listed okay so i'll talk you through that briefly because it's not the main point of the tutorial. So what I do is I, I extract the, the school number here. Um, let's do that. So as you see here there were 14 uh, schools sampled. Um, ah, yeah, this, so this is interesting uh, to, to uh, remember. What I do here it's uh, well it's, it says match files but it's I don't use it to match files. I use it to um, order the variables in the data set. So often you want to have, at the start of your data set, you want to have the ID variables and then the variables you're working with because that allows you to quickly have a look at the things you're doing and see if things are right. So you, so that you want to have a way to order the variables. And I, I, um, well, if, if there's someone who knows how to do this more efficiently, you please let me know, but uh, I can only think of this little trick in SPSS and that's to use or maybe misuse the match files command. Um, and I think I have it on my, well, where is it, my PowerPoint, here. Um, so you can do that with the match files because match files has a subcommand and that's keep so what I'm 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 doing here is um, I say okay match files the, the match the current file so the the little star the asterisk stands for the current file and normally you would include more files here um, but I said okay just this current the current file so nothing is actually matched or merged and then keep al um, allows you to specify a list of variables and th that will be the, also the sequence of the variables in the data set. So after keep, you can list the, the sequence you want, and you can um, 
specify the keyword all after that and that means include all variables I did not mention if, it's also possible to uh, uh, let let the all keyword out um, and then it implies delete the rest of the variables and, and that's the second uh, example here so that's, that's actually uh, also a very efficient way to uh, to delete variables from your data set okay so let's switch back to the syntax file so that's what I do here as ba I basically say start the data set with the school ID variable that's basically all it says and it works so here now we start with a school ID variable um, okay and then in the same way well not exactly but um, sort of the same way I I extract the the class uh, the class number from the original variable uh, and you can see that here so I created the variable class idea there are a maximum of 15 classes within each school uh, and I no longer need these variables so I delete them and then finally here is what I wanted to do so here I calculate an ID variable which will be un unique for every respondent and which is in the combination of school number the class number and then the number of the individual within the class so let's compute that and then uh, I want to have it in, in as one of the first uh, variables in the data so I reorder the variables and I also set the format and if all of this works we ha should have it here, yes. So here's this uh, ID variable you, sh you saw before in the first part of the tutorial. It's the, the, the number of the school, the number of the class, the number of the individual. Um, however, we have one little problem here, um, and that is that these persons are also the, the persons in the name generator questions, of course. So here are the the friend variables we talked about before so um, we need to change these numbers in a way that they are in line with the ID variable right so the um, they now contain only the number within the class but we want to make sure that th these numbers represent the same kind of structure number of the school number of the class number of the person within the class and that can be done quite easily um, and we can do that by um, using a loop uh, and that's something that's also uh, very convenient if you work with uh, network data because you often have a lot of variables so in this case we use a do repeat loop um, I also have that on my PowerPoint um, so what a do repeat a loop does is that it, it, it performs the same kind of transformation across a list of variables. So this is the same kind of compute or recode or whatever on a long list of variables which you would uh, otherwise have to uh, write down. So have, it's a very efficient way to um, to write syntax actually. Um, so the easiest way an easy way to see that would be to look at this example here. So suppose you had a data set with uh, 99 variables labeled uh, variable 1 to variable 99 and for all of these variables you want uh, to check whether they are missing that's, that's the if if statement here if missing far and if they are missing you want to um, give them the, the the value 999 as sort of a user missing value well you could do that of course by uh, including 99 uh, uh, rows of, of, of syntax, lines of syntax. And you could write down oh, if variable 1 is missing then set it to 999, if variable 2 is m missing set it to 999 etc. But the do repeat loop is far more efficient. So you basically just uh, state for these variables here listed here repeat this block of syntax. 
and then this little uh, placeholder, as it's called, as it's called, so it's uh, I, I called it far here. You could give it any name you want. Takes the place of the variable. And you can so 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 what um, SPS will do is okay. It it sees it do repeat, and then then it it just takes the the first variable from the list, and then substitutes all the fars here and here with the name of the variable. So what it will actually read for the first time it enters the loop is if missing far1 then far1 equals 999. Next one if missing far2 then far2 needs to be 999 until it reaches far99. Okay I hope that this is clear because it will save you a lot of typing. Um, so that's exactly what I do here in the syntax. I, I calculate uh, the the ID uh, number in the same way I did before, but now for all the person persons mentioned in the name generator variables, which are these variables. Okay, so let's do that. And let's see whether it worked. Well, you can already already see them. So these were our friend variables, and now they they have the right kind of ID variable. The, the first uh, friends of respondent one are number ten thousand one hundred and nine and ten, and they correspond to these people. Um, and then uh, the the final step is of course to convert um, the the data set to a, a ties as cases data set. First, I um, I save the data I created here, which is normally not useful if you're working with one data set, but it is very useful if you were, are working with multiple data sets. Um, then I rearrange the, the the variables a little bit, and also I. I drop a lot of variables I don't need because it's easier to uh, explain what I'm doing if you don't have all kinds of redundant information on screen. I, yeah, that's it. And I also included uh, the smoking variable that was part of the data because, well, you, by now you may have forgotten it, but we're interested in smoking. Um, so what, what I want to do now is um, I want to tell SPSS. Let me just get back to here. I want to tell SPSS um, that I want to um, store uh, the information in a different format, which is the vars two cases command, uh, in a way that uh, all of these variables over here, all of these friend variables, should become one friend variable over here. And that is actually more or less, well, literally what the command is. Where is it? Here. And so the you can see it here the the, the this is the actual code uh, I'll be using. So it's the command is var two cases and make this new variable friend from all of the friend variables in the original data set. So the general format is first case, first the cases make the destination variable and then from the original variables. And we're also creating an index here. So you can uh, let SPSS create an index and you, you, you give it a name. In this case, I, I gave it uh, just an I for the index. And we need that index later on to uh, be able to convert the data back. Uh, so you can see, uh, uh, let me just I run the syntax. <coughs> you can see it here. So now the the data are stored in rows, ties as cases, um, and the index that's the i here is just a sort of a, a count of the number of rows per individual. So this is the first row, this is the second row, and the, this is the first row for the second person, etc. Um, 
and as I said, uh, we need uh, that information to be able to convert the data back, which is the opposite command, cases to fars. Um, but we'll do that uh, later on. Um, so uh, now you know uh, what a ties as cases dataset is, and you know how to create one. Uh, the next step will be to calculate um, uh, actual network characteristics using this Tysis Cases dataset.